Hello and welcome to XYZ. In this week's tutorial, I will be taking an introduction look at the new geometry nodes in Blender, since I have a feeling that I will be using this feature quite a bit in my future work. I will be using the latest Blender 2.93 Alpha for this tutorial. Since this is still in active development, expect some instability, crashes and bugs. I will drop a link in the comments where you can download the newest alpha build of Blender. So let's get this procedural party started. So here we are in Blender and right away we are heading over into the geometry node editor. And let's also bring in the timeline. And we are creating a simple plane. Let's keep the plane selected and we are creating a new node graph in geometry nodes. And what that does is it creates a geometry node modifier on our object and the geometry is handed into geometry nodes uh, in the group input and is then handed off without doing anything into the group output and when we get rid of the connection the geometry vanishes and i will be activating the wireframe so we can see the next step what i will bring in is a subdivide node and we can already see that the mesh is getting subdivided and that's not all that special since we had a subdivision surface modifier in blender for quite a while but the special thing about uh, geometry nodes is the whole attribute section and what uh, the attribute does is let's bring in a randomize a attribute randomize node and to really see we also bring in a point instance node which vanishes in the mesh for now but we will also bring in a simple cube and i will hide that for now and select the plane again and the cube comes in as our instance mesh and right away we see that the cube is instanced on every of our vertices of the plane that we bring in through geometry nodes so we will also need a way to scale our cube since it is way too big for now and we can use the point scale for that and we scale the points before uh, we have our instancer and we set that to vector and just make it small enough so we can see our individual cubes and there they are and the moment we increase our subdivisions and the cubes will also increase since they're instanced on every vertex of our plane mesh and what uh, the attributes are doing now is when we click in here we already have some predefined attributes that we can use and there are also some predefined attributes that we don't see in this list, like uh, the scale, since the scale is normally always at uh, 1, 1, 1 in uh, every direction. And the rotation is always zero when you uh, start out with a mesh. So we are using the rotation attribute for now and we can already see it happening when we increase our random value 
the cubes start rotating randomly around all three axes. And Blender and Geometry Nodes is uh, smart in a way that we are generating float values for now, which is just a single value, but a rotation is normally a vector that uses x, y, and z coordinates to define uh, the rotation. And it just uses the same float for every of the three axes that we need for our rotation vector. But we can also specify a vector. And this way we can deviate in every axis we want. So we could just rotate around the C axis alone. But we are not limited to predefined attributes. We can name our attributes however we want and then reuse them later in the node graph by just uh, referencing the same name. Hopefully the idea of attributes and their use cases will become a bit more clearer once we start moving through this tutorial and start creating our animation. So I'd like to start out by bringing in and vector math node and the second one will be the sample texture node in the sample texture node i create a new texture and this button will bring us over into the properties panel to edit the texture i'm going with clouds and i'll be increasing the size to one and i rename this since this will be used to displace our instances. And for the attributes, we're starting out with the position, not the normal, the position. And as the B input, I'm going with a vector. And for the output, I'm going with a new attribute that I call position texture. So what this node will do, it grabs the position of the cubes. Then we can offset it manually with uh, this vector in all three axes, and then it will output uh, whatever value this will lead to into our position dot texture attribute. So we head over to the sample texture node and in here I'll reuse our position texture attribute. So it will use that for the mapping and to sample the texture and I'll output this into a displacement attribute. But since we are not using this displacement attribute yet, nothing will, will happen to our cubes yet. And to make something happen, we bring in a mix node. We set it to add. The B input will be a vector again. And the factor will become an attribute. And in the factor, I'd like to use the displacement attribute. And in our A input, I want to use the position of our cubes. When we start offsetting this with our vector and we output it into the position again, we start to see that the cubes are offsetting and the offset will come from the sample texture. So we're using a displacement map to offset our cubes. So with our position offset done and 
we are using our displacement now. I'd like to make the scale dependent on the subdivision levels. So the higher the subdivision levels, the smaller the scale should get. And we can use a value node that I will hook up to the subdivide. And in the utilities, we have a math node that I set to power. And I'm going with a base of two. And I'll duplicate that. Set it to divide. And with a value of one, since our base scale is one. And we want to subdivide this by however many subdivisions we are having. And with that, our cubes scale perfectly depending on the subdivision level. So they scale smaller the higher the subdivisions get. And when we scale our plane, the instances will follow perfectly and there is no space between the cubes. But just using cubes as instances is probably a bit boring, so we are going in now and change our instance or object. I'm bringing in a second cube that I will be using for some boolean operations. And I will set that to wireframe. So we can see actually what's going on. And I will duplicate that and set it to intersection. So we can get a smaller cube in here. I apply the modifiers. Then I'm going with my boolean cube and make that a bit smaller and do the same steps again. And I do that until I have five cubes that are placed perfectly inside each other. When we come back to our plane, we see that our new instance objects are already placed. But they are all looking in the same direction. So we want to do some random rotation and snapping them to a 90 degree angle. To get our random rotations, gonna need some more nodes and we start off with a randomize and we want to randomize between 0 and 360 degrees to have a full rotation and we want to store that in a new attribute that we call 
uh, random rotate. Then to actually snap to uh, 90 degrees, we bring in a math node. And there is the snap. Let's make the second input a float and set it to 90. And as our input, as our A input, we use the random rotate and the result we also write into the random rotate. So this value gets overridden. So our random rotate attribute holds now degrees and what we actually need is radians. So to get that we need to convert and the math node can do that as well. And we'll leave in the random rotate attribute as the A input and as the result so we overriding it again. And the last thing is since we want our instances to rotate around the C axis we will be combining an attribute into a vector and x and y will stay afloat since they will stay at zero and for the c we are using our random rotate and we write it into the rotation attribute And with that, our instances rotate around the C-axis and snap to 90 degree angles. And uh, to actually animate our sample point of our texture, I want to do that by using an actual object and I bring in and empty and I bring in a basic circle and I will do a follow path constraint on the empty object to follow along our circle and I will set the keyframes So when I play the animation, the empty follows the circle perfectly. And the now would like to use that empty to drive uh, the actual position from where the texture is sampled. And we can do that by going into the input section and we have an object info node. And here we can grab our empty object and use the location to offset from where the displacement texture is sampled. I'm going to play the animation. You can already see that our instances are moving. But I'd like to have a bit more control still since we since our manual offset is now gone i will just duplicate this vector math node and bring it in here again and i'd like to use the position texture as the input and as the as the result With this, we can also manually offset from where the texture is sampled, which comes in handy when we start bringing in our other instance objects. So they are not moving in the same way. And the animation should become a lot more interesting because of that. And to finish off our animation, I would like to put the whole graph into a uh, group 
so I can expose a few values. And then we can reuse this whole node graph for our other instances. And the most important one will be the object. This is one we need. We also want to have the position offset, then the displacement strings, and we probably should rename this to keep it organized. And I also like to have the min and max values for the random rotation. So I can change that easily. And the seed. We definitely want to expose the seed. Otherwise, our rotations will be similar for every instance. And we can also expose to what the random rotation will snap to. So I'll rename that real quick. And then we can just close the group down. We can control every value that we just exposed in a neat node group. And now that we have everything grouped up, we can stop duplicating our node group and bring in our other instance object. And we need to link up the geometry and I will also link up uh, the subdivision levels. by hooking up uh, the subdivision levels. When I have my object selected, I can now control the subdivisions directly in the modifier stack. And you can do this with every value you see here. You can just expose them in the modifier stack. So when you give this on to someone else, Mm, that person doesn't have to necessarily deal with the geometry nodes editor, but can do all the tweaks inside of the modifier stack. But for now, our only our first uh, instance object is duplicated on our plane, since all the others are not yet making it to the output. 
for that we have to bring in a join geometry node. And when we start hooking that up, we see that all of the instances come in. But here we see why we needed to expose the seat, the random rotation seat, since they're all set to the same seat, so all of the instance object will be rotated the same way. This can make sense if that's the style you want to go for. But we also have the option to go with a different seat value. And with that, all of our instances are rotated differently. And to make this a bit more interesting, we can also adjust the position offset. And we can, of course, still change our displacement texture. Maybe make that a bit bigger and increase the contrast. And with that, we get nice waves. And all of the instancer objects move a bit differently and it generates an interesting animation. And this whole thing is quite procedural and you can just uh, switch out the instancer objects and use different displacement values, different off position offsets and different random rotations and get a completely different effect. So with everything else done for now, we still need to shade our objects. And we can use the actual position values of the, our instance objects to get an interesting effect. So let's get in a separate XYZ 
and we'll using a color ramp and the C position value. Let's get that into the color. And we can also switch out one of the materials. To get a bit of emission in. We can also slow down the waves by scaling down our Bezier circle. With that, the movement becomes slower. And we should probably rename all of our objects so we actually know what they're doing. So this concludes the introduction to Geometry Notes. I hope you had fun exploring this with me and if you'd like to support me, you will find some links to more of my stuff in the description below. Like, share, subscribe, and I would love to see you all next time. Happy blending!